At number 12, the 2008-2009 Denver Nuggets. Making the playoffs was not the problem for the Nuggets since drafting Carmelo Anthony in 2003. Miller was the player who made the Nuggets relevant again. In the season before he was drafted, they won only 17 games. The Nuggets needed a savior, a superstar, someone to put them back on the map as a franchise. Luckily for the Nuggets, the Detroit Pistons passed on him and he fell right into their hands with the third overall pick. The Detroit Pistons select Darko Milicic from Serbia and Montenegro. The Denver Nuggets select Carmelo Anthony from Melo was a complete scorer, a pure scorer. He was elite at scoring at every spot on the court. His 24.8 points per game during this time with the Nuggets is second in franchise history to only Alex English. He had the most lethal jab step you'll ever see. You didn't know if he was going to drive to the hoop or stick the mid-range jumper, but you always had to respect the drive, and it left Melo with enough air space for the jumper. Like Mark Jackson always say, hand down, man down. There wasn't another player who hit more game-winning shots than Melo since he came into the league. But despite always making the playoffs, the Nuggets could never seem to get past the first round. And they never won more than one game in those first round series. The Nuggets had to make a move. In the middle of a suspension that cost Melo 15 games because of a fight against the New York Knicks, the Nuggets made a huge trade. A trade for the one and only Allen Iverson. The answer. He was going to team up with Melo to become the highest scoring duo in the NBA. There was certainly a lot of excitement with these two on the court. But in the playoffs, nothing changed. More first round losses, and they still couldn't win more than one game in a series. Another change needed to be made. It's unusual for a team to make a big move right after the first week of the regular season. But the Nuggets did after the first three games of the 2008-09 season. They decided to make a move sooner rather than later and this move proved to be one of their best decisions in franchise history. Not every day an MVP gets traded for a finals MVP one week into the season, but on Monday, that's what happened. AI traded back to the East to the Pistons. In return, Nuggets get 2004 finals MVP Chauncey Billups and Antonio McDice, a major shakeup to start the season. Here's a look at both stars, AI and Chauncey, a combined 25 years experience in the league, Iverson, of course, one of the most prolific scorers of his generation. Chauncey, though, known for coming through in the clutch. The answer, nine all-star appearances. Chauncey Billups has three. The Nuggets traded Iverson for one of the most underrated point guards in the NBA. A NBA champion, Mr. Big Shot, Chauncey Billups, the Colorado native. This wasn't the first time he played with this organization. He was also there during the lockout shortened season in the 1998-99 season. The hometown hero was back. His skills and presence were exactly what the Nuggets needed, and it's what Carmelo needed. Billis was a guy who held everybody accountable. There was a different vibe with this team once Chauncey Billups got there. It seemed that the Nuggets always had the team who had the potential to be a contender, but wasn't disciplined enough. That was no longer the case once Billups entered the locker room. He was a George Carl type of player, a professional, a leader, tough-minded, and a high basketball IQ. George Carr coached a couple of players like that in his career and Gary Payton and Sam Fussell. The big differences in the roster from the previous year was no Marcus Camby or Iverson and they added Chauncey Billups. Melo wasn't the only player on the roster who had a history of hitting clutch shots. Billups against Stoudemire for the lead and Billups appears to have given the Pistons a win as he has carried his team. All he does it for the 10 millionth time with a game on. Working against Mills. Now he fires. Mills it! A triple at the horn! Pistons win! Pistons win! Chauncey from downtown! The Pistons down Golden. Billups is the classic case of not fully judging a player's career after the first couple of seasons. Chauncey was a top three pick in 1997 
and ended up being traded in the middle of his rookie year. He was on five teams in his first five years of his career. Not ideal for any player, but he ended up having a Hall of Fame career. Some players need more time than others. Sometimes playing with the right coach and the right team can turn things around. Chauncey said the late great Flip Saunders turned his career around during his one year with the Timberwolves and that led him to the Detroit Pistons where he became an NBA champion and got the name Mr. Big Shot. He was a much different player the second time around with the Nuggets. He was an established and experienced leader and brought a sense of stability and reliability at the point guard position for the 2008-09 Denver Nuggets. Carmelo Anthony was the best player on the team, but Chauncey was the most important player on the team. The other new addition to this team was guard Dante Jones. Very athletic and a good defensive player. He was the Tony Allen of the Nuggets, a Ron Artest type, somebody who wasn't afraid to mix it up. He's more known for being a dirty player than anything. So many flagrant fouls this call. To me, when a guy reaches out and pushes with both hands, that's excessive. And that is unabsorbed. And as you said, Jeff, that's not an accident. That's all no about that. That is all purpose. That's not an accident. The Nuggets still have the big man trio of Kenyon Martin, Nene, and the bird man Chris Anderson. A combination of fearlessness, athleticism, and defense. Kmart had that never back down from any challenge attitude. He was the player who overcame two broken legs and two micro fracture knee surgeries. Nothing could hold him down for too long. He was the NBA bad boy, and he wouldn't bite his tongue for anybody, and most NBA coaches love that. The Birdman had a few obstacles he had to get around to become the player he did for this Nuggets team. In January 2006, he was suspended for two years while he was with the Hornets for violating the league's drug policy by testing positive for a banned substance. After he was reinstated two years later, he ended up signing with the Nuggets in 2008. And like Billups, this was his second stint with the Nuggets. They also signed him as an undrafted free agent in 2001. The Nuggets were 1-3 at the time Billups played his first game with the team. They won in his first game and they never looked back. The 2008-09 Nuggets were steady, consistent, and a perfect blend of high scoring offense and a disruptive defense. Billups was the leader on offense and defense, putting everybody in the right spots. The Nuggets were top 10 on both ends of the court. They were 7th in offensive rating and 8th in defensive rating. This was a team that could win in different ways. They could win a defensive battle in the 80s, and they can also win in a shootout where both teams score over 110 points. Carmelo was coming off winning a gold medal on the Redeem team during the summer. That experience helped him go into the season with a renewed focus. Playing with players like Kobe Bryant and the others inspired Melo on defense. He started giving great effort on defense and sacrificing on offense. He played like a more mature player, and he also looked like a more mature player. This was the year that Melo gave up his signature braids. He came into the season with a new look, a new focus, and a new attitude. This team was so fun to watch. The ball was moving, and everybody was on the same page. The previous five years, the Nuggets were always the lower-seeded team and starting the playoffs on the road. But this season, they won 54 games, which also tied with the Spurs and the Blazers. But the Nuggets had the tiebreaker and had the second seed in the Western Conference. And the Nuggets didn't let their foot off the gas in the playoffs. They dominated in the first two rounds. They played Chris Paul and the Hornets in the first round. And they won the first two games by a combined 44 points, led by their two best players. After dropping Game 3 in New Orleans, they came back in Game 4 and destroyed the Hornets 121-63, to a 58-point blowout. They finished the Hornets off in Game 5 and advanced to the second round for the first time since 1994. Next up was the Dallas Mavericks, who had just upset the Spurs in the first round. The Nuggets continued to take care of business at home, and in Game 3, it had seemed that the Mavericks had a win secured in Game 3. Carmelo hits it! He hit a three! Just like with the Hornets, the Nuggets finished with a 4-1 series win and reached the Western Conference Finals for the first time since 1985. And that team that they lost to in 85 was the Lakers. That was the same matchup in the 2009 Western Conference Finals. The Lakers were coming off a Finals loss to the Boston Celtics in 2008. 
a team that swept the Nuggets in the first round during that finals run. The Nuggets proved that they belong on the same court as the Lakers and stood toe to toe with them from the first quarter to the fourth quarter. Game one came down to the final seconds. Carmelo went off for 39 points, but a bad pass by Anthony Carter on an inbound pass cost the Nuggets a chance to win the game. And that wasn't the last time the Nuggets lost in that fashion. In game two, Carmelo once again came with his A game and scored 34 points and helped the Nuggets get a split in LA, winning 106 to 103. The Nuggets had a legit chance to go a 2-1 at home in game three. But once again, a bad inbound pass cost the Nuggets another chance to win the game. In game four, the Nuggets played their best game of the series. They blew out the Lakers 120 to 101, tying the series up at two games apiece. In game five, both teams were tired going into the fourth quarter, but Kobe Bryant led the Lakers to a nine point win. And in game six, the Lakers put their foot on the Nuggets neck and then let up. The Lakers closed out the series 119 to 92. It was the end of an amazing, unexpected season for the Denver Nuggets. After losing in the first round for five straight years, the Nuggets were two wins away and two bad inbound passes away from the NBA Finals. Even though the future looked bright for the Nuggets going forward, this was their best finish. George Carl ended up being diagnosed with cancer a couple of seasons after, and Carmella forced his way to the New York Knicks, and that was all she wrote for the golden age of the Denver Nuggets.